Hey guys, 66 here, and I know I haven't uploaded in a while, mostly just because I've gotten a bunch of stuff recorded, I just didn't end up liking it. Today we're going to be recording, and hopefully uploading, the top 20 Yu-Gi-Oh cards right now, this format specifically. Legal, obviously, we're not talking about banned cards. Let's just get right into it. First, side note, this is going to be kind of a mess, because I'm trying to pull like all the archetypes into one list, so it's, it's going to seem really messy, but I'll explain all my choices. So at number 20, we have Trap Trick. Alright, Trap Trick is really good in Eldritch and Subterror and basically any trap deck. It's super strong, especially in Eldritch, because you can get your Scarlet, which is basically the best Eldritch card. And what you have to realize is with Eldritch, you get one card, and then that will just keep looping. Alright, get another one, get another one, get another one, and they just keep plussing. And then you can also get your Power Traps, and we'll get into that. So Trap Trick is a really good card. The reason it's not higher than some of the traps it gets is just because it has to be the last trap you use, right? So it's like less versatile in that sense. Where if you set trap trick, that has to be the last thing. You can't use it first, and there's a lot of problems, especially in Eldritch. If you get Scarlet, you aren't able to conk with it. So yeah, number 20. At number 19, we have Hulk. Hulky Fibrax. Uh, it would have been a lot higher back when we had Link Cross, obviously. My new Dragon Link deck is completely dead. I'm still kind of upset about that. Whatever, we'll make things work. But Hauk still gets here, mostly because it's still a really good card. You can still take advantage of it using its opponent's turn effect to summon a Synchro for free. That can go like Wonder Magician, Pop Scythe, and then Synchro on the opponent's turn. That's still really powerful. And you can also do a Roar on plays. A Roar on plays like the combo ones at least, don't work without Hulk. Because you need the Hulk to get the death spot, and that gets everything going. So that's why Hulk is still on this list, but much lower than it would have been last format before Link Cross got banned. Next up, at number 18, we have Manju. So, kind of a weird pick, I know, Manju. But basically, I don't know what Drytrons do. And I, I'm not figuring out what Drytrons do, okay? I, I don't want to. <laughs> Uh, well, from what I know, Manju basically gets you whatever you need for Drytron. Uh, it doesn't actually get you your real Drytron cards, I guess, but it gets you a Ritual Spell, which is really good. And it gets you to your Ben Tens or your Megalith if you're playing that package. It's just a really good card in Drytron. It's like your normal summon, I think. <laughs> I, I don't know of any... Again, I have no clue what Drytron does. But, yeah, Drytrons are really strong, that's what I know, because... Uh, they can turn skip you, they can put up 5 billion negates on Herald, <laughs> and like you hit them with negates and they kind of don't care. I I'm not sure, but I just know they're really strong, so that's why I manage these here. At number 70, we have Aurorodon. The reason Aurorodon is higher than Hawk is because when you're playing Drytron turn skip, Aurorodon doesn't use Hawk at all, it just gets you the trap back from your graveyard, and that's sort of the whole point there. But, like, the main thing with the Rordon is still to go Deathbot combo with Hauk. And Ignite turn skip, as well as other turn skip combos that I came up with, I think are really good right now. Basically, all you have to do is summon two Heralds and two level 4s, and then you just overlay all of them into Alan Burshin. Alan Burshin effect, Detach 4. You get the Thunder of Ruler to skip their battle phase, and then Herald's Search for Advanced Ritual and a Morphractor Pain. So then you just activate Mass Ritual, and that's actually Ignites, because your deck already has normal monsters, send them, summon your Ritual, skip their main phase 1, set the trap, skip their battle phase, full turn skip, next turn you have enough damage to just FTK them. That's insanely strong. It's also just still a good card, because Coltwing is still really strong, and it does get you to um, Herald Savage if you really need it. You have to run some Bricks for a but it's really good there. Next up, at number 16, we have Dogmatica Punishment. Weird pick, I know. It's really strong. You search this with Ecclesiast. It's so free. And then, honestly, this makes Ecclesiast better than Alistair. Because with Alistair, you get Macabre. Punishment, I think, is better than Macabre. That's how good it is. Because it's two pops, or it's a pop and a plus. It's really good. It's insanely good. You can pop really big cards with this if you just send a really big card and then you don't get any extra value, but it's still just a trap pop, which is still very powerful. 
Uh, you can kill conductors with it. It's really strong. Or two pops if you're using the Tiss. That's insane. So valuable. You send Ashrang to get another Ecclesiast to then get another punishment so it loops itself. And you can also send cards like Rafflesia or even like Shadal's. And that'll just get you into a whole nother engine. Like when we're Flesia, you get Red Eyes Fusion. It's insanely strong. Now, that is the only problem with Punishment, that you can't use your extra deck the turn after you use it. But if you're playing the right deck, like Eldritch or Pendulum, you can just not care about that, and the amount of value you get on Punishment is just ridiculous. Next up, we have Scarlet. So this is the only Eldritch card to make the list. It's the only card in the actual Eldritch engine. Of course, there's other cards higher on the list that you play in Eldritch, but Scarlet is just the best one because it's a trap that protects your life points with a big defense. It gets your Golden Lord, which allows you to for your Golden Lands effects to actually trigger, and also it's a trap, which means that the graveyard effect, as soon as you use it on that turn, next turn, you can use the graveyard effect. It's not like Conk where you might have to link it off into something or they have to kill it. No, Scarlet's just immediate. The trap, as soon as you activate it, goes to Grave. So you can always use an next turn. That's so strong. Compared to Black Awakening, it's so much better just because it's a trap, which means you can use it on the opponent's turn. Compared to White, it's still better because you can get it directly from the deck and that's really the problem with White. It's so good in basically every respect. And as we get further into Eldritch Theory, I might make a whole nother video just on Eldritch Theory because I think it is so complex. But having all your cards be traps, having set five is insanely powerful because then on the opponent's turn, you're using all your cards on the same turn. So if they have once per turn type of negation effects, those don't work on your Eldritch effectively because you're not going using cards on your turn and then using cards on their turn. There are ones where turn effects don't come back. See, that's the problem with playing a trap deck, is if you're using cards on your turn, and then using traps on the opponent's turn, there are ones where turn effects come back. But if you're using only traps on the opponent's turn, then they have to deal with all your effects on the same turn, which is much more difficult. Which brings us neatly into our next card on the list here, Needle Ceiling. This is probably the most underrated card in the entire game. This card is so, so powerful. Now, you may be wondering why Needle Ceiling is of Torrential, right? Isn't Torrential much better? Well, the answer to that is just a fat no. So the most important thing with Needle Ceiling is that, if you think about it, nowadays, summoning four monsters is trivial in every deck. There is no deck that struggles to put out four monsters. So having a summon versus having four monsters is basically the same requirement. It's going to be live. Now, what's the advantage of Needle Ceiling? You can use it in the battle phase. That, that's really it, and that's so huge. Because think about it this way. First of all, we have this card called Miscellaneous Wars, which makes all your cards unaffected during the main phase. All your dinos don't care. But during the battle phase, that turns off, so you just Needle Ceiling them, and then they cry. You can't do that with Torrential. They'll just kill you. Secondly, decks can easily have 8,000 damage with their board and then just go for a game immediately if you have torrential that will not be able to activate if you have needle ceiling you just activate it and it blows up the board and if you're playing outlet sure you have ways to trigger your own torrential by summoning but keep in mind they're gonna have negates so if they're going for game and you summon something to block an attack they can negate that card to get their attack through and then you can't even torrential but if you have Needle Ceiling, that just baits out their negate. So then you Needle Ceiling, and their entire board disappears. It is so good in that respect. And then furthermore, there's cards that float in this game. So if you use Torrential on this, their last summon, you know when, where their last summon is before they go for attacks. You Torrential them, you read them perfectly, everything dies. They still float, and they can summon more monsters after that. Let's say their board was full anyways. Now they can summon more monsters. And then get more damage on board. Needle Ceiling doesn't have that problem. Because when you activate Needle Ceiling in the battle phase, they can't summon more monsters. They have to go M2. And then by that point, they can't do more damage to you. They can't attack over your cards. It's so much more powerful. Needle Ceiling is such an incredible card. And there's just so many nuances that it has over Torrential Tribute, which makes it a better card. And the main thing is just using it in the battle phase. It sounds so small, 
but it's so significant. I'll get even deeper into this if I make an Elder Theory video. I'll just go on and on and explain exactly why needle stealing is so powerful. So next up, Lulu. Lulu is the best virtual world monster without a doubt. Not the best virtual world card, grant you. The best virtual world monster. There's a big difference there. Lulu is really good. But what you have to realize is all the virtual world cards, really they do the same thing. They summon themselves for free and they dump stuff to get more advantage. That's what all of them do. Lulu is the best one because you get even more advantage on top of that. But at its core, they all do the same thing. They're all extenders and they all get you to synchro plays and XC's plays. That's what all the virtual worlds do. And Lulu is really no exception to that. It just gets you even more plus. That's why it's higher. And the other virtual world monsters are not on the list. Next up, we have Solemn Strike. Uh, I know, ridiculous. Solemn Strike this high? What format is this? It's so good. Needle Ceiling Strike is like the best combo in the game. Because <laughs> they negate Needle Ceiling, they have like 10 more negates, Strike, board's gone. It doesn't matter. Selfie 3, Monster Effect Negation. It doesn't even seem that good, right? Like Judgment's in the game. Well, this card's so good going second. That's what you have to realize. Because <laughs> you just board wipe them and they can't stop you. Because the moment they try to stop your board wipe, you strike. And then they're stuck, unless they have Red Reboot. Because it's Spell V3. And Spell V3 is really comes back when decks are putting up like 8 Spell V2 negates. Spell V3 just does not care. And Strike is just so good right now. It's ridiculous. Hand Traps, you can negate them. Effects, you can negate them. It ends up being so much better than Judgment. It's just so much better going second. And you pay less life points, which matters now, because you got cards like Dragoon that just burn you, and you got like insane ways to do damage, that preserving life points really does matter. Especially with Eldritch, when you're attack blocking with traps, you're going to run out of traps, and you're going to take damage. And you're paying life points on Eldland as well, because you need to do that, right? Everything is eating away at your life points. To where paying 4,000 to stop a Duster, it's worth it. But to stop anything else, you're like hurting yourself more than you're helping yourself. Because you can just die when you have a complete play to take advantage and take over next turn. You just have all your elder traps in grid. They're all going to trigger. You're going to win next turn. But you are just you just die by like 500 life points. And if you paid a few less life points, you would have won that game. So that's another thing. Life points actually matter a lot in Eldritch. I do think that Eldritch is the second best deck right now. So that explains why there's so many cards to do with Eldritch on this list. And then next up, the ultimate anti Eldritch, Harpy's Feather Duster. It's at 1, but this card's insane. It's just that Yay, your board's gone. Like, <laughs> against Eldritch and then other trap decks, which I take to be the third best deck, like Sky Striker, even for example, is insanely good right now. Even Trap Tricks, Underrated Deck, Sub Terrors, all those. They just die to Feather Duster. It's a ridiculous card. It just kills board. Even against some decks that you wouldn't expect it to be super good against, like Virtual World, Feather Duster is really good against Virtual World. Feather Duster is the ultimate side deck card, and yeah, it gets really high on the list. So the next up we have Selene. I know, this list goes all over the place. Selene. Card's ridiculous. It's so good. It gives you free counters, so the Demian becomes just Law of the Normal. Boom. Wipe everything. Not quite, because you're not hand wiping, but ridiculous. It just gets you free counters, gets you free summons. It's not once per turn. Selene is a really good card. And then most importantly, it makes access code, which is ridiculous. Even decks that aren't really pendulum decks that don't use spell counters can still use Selene because of its ability to make access code for three materials, which is ridiculous. Access code is already good enough, and then it's 5,000 attack off the bat. Selene is just really strong. And then after Selene, we have Cyber Emergency. Because Drytron are strong, right? And this is like all your Drytron cards. I'm not going to read the Drytron cards. We're just going to put Emergency here instead and have it represent all of them, right? Gotcha. All right, next up we have Ignites, the whole archetype. Because uh, I can't pick any one Ignite because they do exactly the same thing. <laughs> they all have the same effect. So it's really useless to pick any one. But with Ignites, they're really good going second. They break every board. Like, uh, uh, legit. You draw your Ignites, they break every board. You kind of struggle with VFD, which is definitely a problem, this format. But there's ways to sort of get around that in ways they don't see coming. Like, people are usually going to wait for their VFD. They're not going to shotgun it, so sometimes you can kaiju it. 
Sometimes you can chalice. There's ways to get around it. It is really tough against VFD. We'll grant you that. But it can still win through VFD, especially post side. And then only first, you can still put up a board. You can turn skip, which is really strong. It's still a really powerful deck. And I do think that Ignites are one of the best decks. They are so unique, though, because you just play, like, all the Ignites. Uh, that's your deck. <laughs> and then moving on from Ignites, we have Chuche. This is the best virtual world card. It's not even close. The trap is ridiculous. It's an interruption. It pops a card for free, which is insane this format. Because, look at Elish. They set five traps. You pop a trap before they can activate it. It's really strong. It can recur your resources. Insanely powerful, because... You know, you think to beat Virtual World, oh, you just, you know, make them run out of resources. Because they have only so many, and then when they run out, they're done. No, Shuche just brings them all back. Ridiculous in that respect. Even the Graveyard Effect's so good. Because it gets you your Synchro plays more alive, it gets your XC's plays more alive. And then you have a little 6, you just change it straight up to level 9, and then you can make VFD that way. It's ridiculous. Like, Virtual World don't do anything without Shuche. Can we be honest? Chuche hard carries Virtual World. Virtual World gets completely dominated by trap decks and still does. But be just because of Chuche, you can deal with them and you can win against trap decks. This card is ridiculous. And then moving on right after that, we have Ecclesias. Ecclesias is so, so good. It's the best normal summon in the game. And it doesn't even need to get normal summon because you can special it for free if they have any extra deck monster or if you have any extra deck monster. So it's an extender and it's a starter and it's a finisher because punishment is also that good. And it infinitely recurs itself because punishment can get Ash Dragon, which then gets another Ecclesia. Understand this? This is one of the best cards in the second best stack which is Eldritch. You play Dogmatica Eldritch, it's so much better than Zodiac Eldritch. And then it's also really good in the best deck, Pendulum, because it's a free Spellcaster Extender that's also a finisher. It's insane. You can make Crowley with this, you can make Selene with this to get into access code, and you can search a win condition in the form of Punishment. It's so powerful what Ecclesiastes is able to do, how good it is, and how many decks, right? All the trap decks can use this card, Pendulum can use this card. The best combo deck is Pendulum. So everything can take advantage of Ecclesiast. And it's so powerful. It's so free as well. You just put it in there. You're not losing anything. So good. And then after that, we have Magical Abductor. The card's ridiculous. It's a free search. It legit just says, I'm at scale and I search a card for free. And I hold counters for your Endemium plays. It's so good. It just searches any Pendulum card for basically free, and then it's a scale at the same time. Ridiculously good. The only problem is like a 3 scale, and that, that might be problematic. But it's still a really good card, and it kind of conflicts with Cerberus, which is actually good right now because of Garuda for Chuche, because Chuche is ridiculous. But uh, it, it's a Doctor. I mean, what else can I say? It, it's so good. And then number 4, we have Desires. Pawn of Desires. Think about it. It's really good in Pendulum, and it's really good in Virtual World, and it's really good in Rogue. That's enough. A really good card in the best deck, a really good card in like the fifth best deck, Virtual World, it's so free. Just draw two, it's really good in Rogue. You're playing ABC, Cyber Dragon, Sky Striker. He has good Sky Striker too. There are so many decks where Desires is an incredible card. Striker is one of the best decks right now, people just don't realize it. It's so good. It's bad in Drytron, and it's bad in Eldritch. That's it. It's good in everything else. You can even play in Dinos if you're daring enough. I wouldn't, but if you're daring enough, you can play it. This card's ridiculous. And then after that, we have an extra card here. Access Code. This card's insane. It's so broken. You don't play in Virtual World, I know. And you don't really play in Eldritch. But you play in Pendulum, you play in Sky Striker, you play in every flavor of Rogue. It's ridiculous. You make one Selene... And then you get this thing out, 5,300 attack, pop like four cards, and then attack the game. It's so free. <laughs> it's so free. Striker is even easier. It's a ridiculous card. And even if you're not playing a deck that can take advantage of Selene, let's say you're playing Ignites of all things, you can make Aurora Dawn, not use, <laughs> not use the first effect, and then just make Access Code. You still use second effect, right? You still use second effect. Really dumb how that works, but Access Code is an insane card. It's so powerful. It's easily the strongest card in the game in the sense of just 
Power, you know, going second, breaking the board, and then going for game. This card's insane. It's so powerful. And people don't think about it as the best card, but if you really consider it, it, it kind of is, right? And then number two, we have Nadir Servant. Nadir Servant is so good. It's free plus free card. Remember how good Ecclesiast is? Nadir Servant is Ecclesiast, and you search a card or pop a card for free. If there was a spell that said destroy a card on the field, target a card, destroy it, that would be a good card. That would actually be an okay going second card. Because if you don't know if you're going as trap deck or a monster deck, and you're main decking it, you want main deck a going second card, that's a good option because it deals with everything. I don't think it's quite strong enough, but because of how free it is, it's still a decent option. Nadir does that with the scent of Natis. But then it also searches Ecclesiast for free, and Ecclesiast itself is one of the best cards in the game. See what I'm talking about here. And then going first, you can send Ash Dragon. So you can send a second Ecclesiast. Very powerful, right? You also send a uh, Shadal card. Very powerful, once again. You can also send a Rafflesia, and then search for the Red Eyes Fusion, the Sand Eyes by face. So then the next turn, turn three, because you're playing Trap Deck, you're going to survive. You use Red Eyes Fusion, and that completely takes over the game. So no matter how you spin it, the Dino Servant's insane. It can let you come back from the game. It can let you take over a game by searching and plusing. It can let you break a board by using the Tiss and then getting a free plus after that. It's so powerful. It does everything. This is really like Engage all over again, because... It is insane plus, it's a spell that you can use whenever you want, it gets you your engine piece, gets your Ecclesiastes, gets your whole engine going, and it breaks boards. Like, what more could you really ask for, right? That's what NK did, it got you Ray, it got you Drones, it got you Widow, it got you Afterburners. That's the deer. That's the deer. So just for some honorable mentions before we get to number one, Red Axe Fusion slash Dragoon, really good. Really good, especially in sub terrors and Eldritch. Really good. Uh, Zeus. Yeah, Zodiac. Zeus is in the same card. Doesn't make the list, though. Doesn't make the list. It just it just doesn't. I don't think it's good enough. I don't think it's as good as Trap Trick or any of the other cards on the list. So there's your honorable mentions. And Alistair. Alistair is really good in Pendulum, believe it or not, because of Baby Selene. It's so good with Baby Selene. Doesn't make it, though. Doesn't make it. So, at number one, we have Servant of Endymion. Yep. It is ridiculous. Servants are both at number one and two. Just a dumb card. It's so good. Uh, I guess you whatever you want. It's free plus, summons the card from deck, and summons itself at the same time. <laughs> I mean, think about it that way. It's like an E-Telly, and then summons another card from your deck. Free. So free. So broken. <laughs> Maybe I should put E-Telly on this list. That's an honorable mention as well. And Mighty Master. There's our honorable mentions list. Cosmic Cyclone, too. Good side card. Oh, yeah. Servant's Ridiculous. It's just a free plus. Not much I have to say. It's the best card in the best deck. Mastery as well, but, you know, Mastery gets you Servant. Mastery's not much without Servant. Servant's still well, everything it is without Mastery. So, uh, yeah, guys. If you guys want to critique my list, go right ahead. I think this is the best top 20 cards in Yu-Gi-Oh! list. These are the top 20 Yu-Gi-Oh cards this format. And uh, yeah, that's me already, guys. Take care, y'all. Goodbye.